Hi! Welcome to the 3D Pen Den. In my previous video, I talked about the seven reasons to bake your 3D Pen projects. The links to that and more baking related videos are in the description and you may want to check those out for all the troubleshooting details which still apply. I hope I made a good case for why to bake. And by the way, there are way more reasons than seven. But the time ran out before I could explain the details of how to bake. You know, the time, the temperatures and the pros and cons of different baking surfaces. So let's do it now. And while we are at it, let me show you a few of my more educational disasters and what I learned from them in the process. First, you obviously need an oven, the size that fits your usual projects and ideally one you don't also use for food. I bought this toaster oven because it fits the 12 by 12 inch tiles which are my preferred baking surfaces. The same as when you bake cookies, you need your surfaces to be heat resistant and non-stick. I like ceramic tiles because they are completely flat and don't warp on you. But they also heat up slowly and retain heat long after you take them out of the oven, which extends your work time when you need to do something to the project while it's still hot. People ask if it's okay to use a cookie sheet. Absolutely, but you need to find one that's completely flat. Most of the toaster oven trays are not. Also keep in mind the metal will heat and cool way faster than ceramic tile. Again, the same as with cookies. You will need some kind of liner to make the surface non-stick. I used to use parchment paper, which kind of worked, but every fold and wrinkle would imprint into the project. Silicone baking liners worked way better, but they do get stained anytime you bake intense colors. However, with both of those liners, while the front of the project looked pretty good, the back of it was full of pits where the air bubbles get trapped between the project and the surface with no way out. So it became obvious pretty soon that in addition of being heat resistant and non-stick, the liner also needs to be porous to ventilate that trapped air out. My quest for porous liner was long and here is a quick tour of my more entertaining disasters that turned out to be educational. First I tried to poke holes in my parchment with a pin. And even though every tiny pinhole showed, in the back surface it still had bubbles. Okay, not enough ventilation yet. To get more holes, I put my silicone liner back and forth through a sewing machine without thread. It barely shows in the video, except at the red edges. Even those holes show. Even making tiny little warts, which made me super impressed with the sensitivity of the plastic. But some bubbles are still there. Okay. Still not enough ventilation. Perhaps some loose fabric would work, like burlap? Okay, it may not be heat resistant or non-stick, but perhaps if I wet it, it will keep from burning for long enough to bake this. Talk about wishful thinking. Of course it burned. Into beautiful chocolate brown, and it also stuck so bad it had to be cut out. Perfect for if you wanted something permanently embedded in the plastic, but for bubble prevention, nope. 
So let's try wire screen. That's definitely heat resistant, right? Look how clear it is. This works. Except that nobody can get it off the screen. Okay, not non-stick enough. Never mind. All I need to do is grease the screen and all will be solved. And perhaps it would be best if I suspended it in the air over a pan so it can really ventilate. Maybe I will also turn on the convection fan so the air can freely circulate all around. I was so confident this would work. I actually baked a real project and not just a sample. The most spectacular fail so far. Look at those bubbles. Some popped all the way through. The plastic is just so sensitive it flows with the air currents of the convection fan. Okay, this is way too much ventilation. Then I met Teflon Sheets. We met online and it was love at first bake. Here is what the box looks like in case you want to look for them. I will also leave a link in the description. These were made for t-shirt decal transfers and are also sold for ironing and even food baking, oven lining. Definitely look heat resistant here. And yes, also for baking cookies, so food safe, therefore user friendly. Sounds perfect. You get three 16 by 20 inches size in this box. One more super important thing. There are some Teflon sheets on the market that are coated with something that makes it slick like plastic. Do not get those. It has to be the uncoated kind with holes that ventilate for this to work. I was even able to bake the bubbles out of previously bubbly coaster. Now that we have solved what to bake on, let's talk about how to bake. This is what I usually do and then say time and temperature may vary depending on your equipment. And by vary, I mean vary a lot. So let's talk about it. The top of the melting range for PLA is usually about 220 Celsius, which is about 428 Fahrenheit. So you want to set your baking temperature just a little bit above that to achieve a good leveling of the surface. Toaster ovens usually come without inside lights, so I use a flashlight to keep checking it. So how do you tell when it's done? There is a point where the pan lines disappear and also you can look for general leveling of the surface. It evens out when the plastic gets liquid enough. And that's the point where you want to take it out. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can burn it if you bake it too hot or too long. So don't. Speaking of too long, Baking time varies even more than the temperature because it depends on all these factors and more. My previous oven was smaller and everything took about half the time of this one. We already talked about that cookie sheets versus style will change times. Placement in the oven is another one. My oven has three levels and I usually bake in the middle unless I'm filming it, the camera likes the bottom rack better. I tried bake versus broil, but I think the bake feature won. And definitely turn off the convection feature. You have seen the mess that makes. My time is calculated for starting with cold oven and cold tile. This oven doesn't have a preheat feature but you can definitely bake the tile and liner alone for 10 minutes and then put your project in to speed up the bake. If you start with everything already hot, you only need to bake for 5 minutes instead of 15. 
which is a huge difference. However, I think the results are better with the bake that heats the plastic very gradually. The plastic reacts quite dramatically when it hits the hot tile and more imperfections and yes, bubbles will happen because the action is too fast for the air to have a chance to escape through the Teflon sheet. So be patient. Now, even if you have all the right tools, you may still get holes. These splits are not caused by air, but gaps in your 3D pen printing, which get larger as the plastic binds and shrinks. Here are three ways of preventing splits. You can make a multi-layer shape where the next layer closes the holes in the bottom one. But of course you are risking trapping some air in between the layers where it can't get out. If you really want to see what's going on, bake some two-layer clear samples. All of them look quite nice, but you can see in the clear one there are some tiny bubbles. They are below the surface, so it doesn't affect the smooth surface. However, in the clear filament it shows. If you need a super thin sheet of just one layer, iron the gaps shut between two Teflon sheets. They are perfect for that. Again, you may also seal some bubbles in during the ironing process, but in solid colors that won't matter. Alternatively, you can close the gaps with your wood burning iron, looking at your project against a light source. The more detailed instruction is in my first baking video called Smoothing Without Sanding which is in the description. The third method is especially useful if you are dealing with a complex pattern design you don't want to disturb. Now, before you go try this, here are a few things you may need to know. PLA is a bit more organic than some of the other plastics, but it still makes sense to take some sensible precautions like good ventilation, and dedicated equipment, and possibly wearing a respirator to stay safe. Also note that this had only been tested for PLA and it may not work for other types of filament. There are a few problems you may run into as you explore the baking process. It took me four years to meet PLA that doesn't bake well, but they are out there. Recently, I baked a grid and it turned into this spectacular disaster. If this had been my first trial of baking, I would think it can't be done. So before you put a lot of time into some project, test bake a square inch of PLA you are planning to use. It should stay roughly the same shape and size, and most PLA will. However, if it shrinks dramatically, especially in one direction only, it's not going to work for baking. The bad news is you can't bake 3D parts. And if you try, yes, you will get a puddle. The good news is that you can bake flat parts and shape them later. There are several methods of shaping flat parts later, other than hot water forming, but that will have to be another video. Until then, go and make something.